We are going to learn about diagramming data today. So we're going to learn about um, box and whiskers, and we're also going to learn about the steam and leaf. So the box and whisker diagram is a line segment, so it's a line, and that line is going to show us some very important numbers about our data. It's going to show the highest number of our data and the lowest number of our data, it's also going to show us the median of the data and the upper and lower quartiles. So what's a quartile? A quartile is any one of the three values that divide the data into four equally sized groups. So the lower quartile, you can find the lower quartile by finding the median for the lower half of the data. So how this works is that you are gonna take your data and you're going to put it in order. And then you're going to split that data in half, okay, in half. So if it's an even number of data, then that's easy. You have the, you know, the lower half and the bottom half. If you have an odd number of numbers, then that middle number is not going to be in the lower or the upper. It's just going to be out because that's your median. So if it's even, though, then you just split it right down the middle. So to find the lower quartile, you're going to take the lower half and then you're going to find the median of the lower half. To find the middle quartile, well, the middle quartile is just the median. Um, it's the median for all the data. So just how we learned how to calculate the median in the last section, that's what you're doing. You're just finding the median for all the data. Then you have the upper quartile, which is the upper half of the data, and you're going to take the upper half of the data and you're going to find the median for the upper half of the data. So let's look at an example. Um, we have a set of data and it represents the number of pages that were read, okay? And we need to find the lower, middle, and upper quartiles. So the first thing we have to do is we have to take this data and we have to put it in order from least to greatest. Um, or you could do greatest to least, that's fine too. Um, and it looks like there's an even number of numbers. So we have a distinct upper and lower quartiles. So this would be our lower quartile, and this would be our upper quartile. To find the middle quartile, remember the middle quartile is just your median. And remember to find your median, it's the middle number. So not 16 and 70, not 29 and 51, not 29 and 50, not 30 and 46, not 35 and 44, but 39 and 40. 39 and 40 are both kind of in the middle, but remember we had to have one number. We can't say that the median is 39 and 40. We are going to take the average. So we take the average of 39 and 40. So 39 plus 40 and divide it by two which means that our middle quartile or our median of the entire data is 39.5. Now to find the lower quartile, remember that's the median of the lower, okay? So the lower is 16 through 39, right? That's the lower half of our data. And we are going to take the median. So it's not 16 and 39, it's not 29 and 35, but it's 29 and 30 but it can't be two numbers, so we're gonna to have to take the average of 29 and 30. So to get the average, we add them together and divide by two, and so the median for the lower quartile is 29.5. Now to get our upper quartile, we have to find the median of the upper values, right? So between 40 and 70. So it's not 40 or 70, 44 or 51, but it's 46 and 50. Those are the two middle numbers. But a median is only one number, so we have to take the average of 46 and 50. So we add 46 and 50 together, and we divide by two, and we get the number 48. So the middle quartile, the lower quartile, and the upper quartile are all going to show up on the box and whisker diagram. So we're going to construct a box and whisker diagram for the data in this, the example that we just did. So the box and whisker diagram has five numbers on it. 
two of the numbers is just the lowest number and highest number of your of the numbers that you have. So whatever the lowest number is and whatever the highest number is. And then you're going to have your quartiles, your lower quartile, middle quartile, and upper quartile. So the lowest number in our set was 16. So it's going to go here. It's going to be an endpoint. And our highest number was 70. So that's going to be the endpoint, okay, on the other side. And then our median is going to go um, next, 39.5. And then our lower quartile was 29.5. And then our upper quartile was 48. So we plot all of those numbers, okay, on our, our segment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw a box around the lower and upper quartiles. So it's going to create a box. And then once we have a box that goes around the lower and upper quartiles, we're going to go and draw a hash line where the median is. And we're going to go ahead and put a line there. Okay. So that is the box and whisker diagram. So the, di the whisker part, of course, is the, the segment that's outside of the box. All right, the next thing we want to talk about is what is an interquartile range. Now, a range of data is the largest numbers minus the smallest number, and that gives you your range. However, if you have an extreme number, as your highest number and it doesn't really match any of the other data, it can kind of mess up your range. It's not going to be accurate or as accurate for that set of data. So they have created something called the interquartile range and the interquartile range is the difference between the upper and lower quartiles. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do another example. We're going to do a box and whisker diagram for this data, and we want to calculate the interquartile range. So this data, the first thing we have to do is put it in order. I always like to do least to greatest. And I see that there's one, there's 11 numbers, so it's odd. So since it's odd, it's going to be easy to find the median. It's going to be the, the number right in the middle. So it's not 12 or 35, 17 or 33, 22 or 32, 24 or 31, 25 or 29. So right in the middle is 28. So 28 is our median, okay? So when we calculate the lower quartile and the upper quartile, we are not going to consider 28 because remember this is odd. This is an odd number, so we don't count 28. So for our lower quartile, it's the median between 12 and 25. And the number that's in the middle of 12 and 25 for this set of data is 22. And then for our upper quartile, we're just looking at the numbers between 29 and 35. And for this data, the middle number is 32. So our upper quartile is 32. So now we have our median, our lower quartile, and our upper quartile. But remember, they also wanted us to figure out the range, the interquartile range. So it's the difference between upper and lower. So 32 minus 22. So our interquartile range is 10. So now we can do our box and whisker diagram. So remember, the smallest number is here, which is 12. And then the highest number is 35. We want to put our median, and our median is 28. Notice how I did not put 28 right in the middle of our segment because 28 is not between 12 and 35. 28 is closer to 35, so I'm going to put 28 right there. And then our lower quartile is 22, so I'll put a dot there. And our upper quartile is 32, which is really close to 35, so it's going to go there. Then I'll draw the box part which it goes between the lower and upper quartiles, and then I'll put a hash mark where the median is. Let's get some more practice in. So for these examples, we have two sets of data. 
we have set A and set B. And they have already put set A and set B in order from least to greatest. So that's wonderful. All we have to do now is um, look at the different information that we can get from those sets of data. So the first thing we want to do is find the median of each. So the median of A, remember, is the number right in the middle. So it's not 13 and 25, not 14 and 22, not 16 and 22, not 17 and 18, but 17 exactly. And for B, it's not 19 and 100, it's not 22 and 40, it's not 22 and 39, but it's 35 and 37. But remember, a median can't be two numbers, so we have to take the average of 35 and 37, and we get 36. So the median for A was 17, and the median for B was 36. Now we want to find the lower quartile of each. So A has an odd number of numbers, which means that we're going to throw out the median of 17. So when we were looking at the lower quartile, we're looking at the numbers between 13 and 17. So the middle numbers are 14 and 16, and so the average of 14 and 16 is 14 plus 16 divided by 2, which is going to be 15. So that's the lower quartile for A. The lower quartile for, for B, since it's even, we're actually going to look at the, the, the lower half, all of the lower half. So between 19 and 35, the middle number is going to be tw between 22 and 25. So we take the average, 22 plus 25 divided by 2, and we get 23.5. Now we want to find the upper quartile for each set. So when we look at A, remember A had odd number of numbers. So we're not going to consider that middle number 17. We're just going to do 18, 22, 22, and 25. So the number in the middle is, bet is between 22 and 22. Well, that means that it's going to be 22. And then the upper quartile for B is between 37 and 100, so between 39 and 40. And the number between 39 and 40, we take the average, so 39 plus 40 divided by 2 is 39.5. Now we want to find the interquartile range of each. So remember to find the interquartile range, we had to do the upper of A minus the lower of A. And then we had to do the upper of B minus the lower of B. So for A, that would be 7, and for B, it would be 16. Now we want to do a box and whisker diagram of A. Well, since 13 was my smallest number on A, that will be that endpoint. In and then since 25 was the highest number of A, that's going to be that endpoint. Now my median is 17. So 17 is closer to 13 than 25. So it's going to go here. It's not going to go right in the middle. And then 22, which was my upper quartile, is close to 25. So it's all the way over here. And then 15 is in between 13 and, and 17, so that, that point's going to go there. So now that I have my five numbers, I'm going to go ahead and draw my box. And remember, my box goes around the upper and lower quartiles. And then I have, once I have my box done, I'm going to go ahead and put a hash where the median is, which was at 17. All right, now we're going to do our box and whisker diagram for B. So first we'll do our endpoints. So our lowest number was 19, and our highest number was 100. Our median was 36, and so 36 is closer to 19 than 100. So we're not going to put 36 in the middle of our line. That wouldn't make sense. And then our upper quartile was 39.5, which is really close to 36. So it's going to go there. And then our lower quartile was 23.5, which is closer to 19, so it's going to go there. Now that we have our five numbers plotted, we're going to go ahead and draw our box around the upper and lower quartiles, and then we're going to put a hashtag where our meet, or not hashtag, but a hash line, where our median is at 36.
All right, now we're going to learn what a stem and leaf diagram is. So that is a bar graph. And what we're going to do is that we're going to, on this bar graph, the data points in each interval are listed in order. So what an interval is usually by tens. Um, so let's look at an example. We have this data and it's already in order from least to greatest, okay? And it is the number of pages read. So it goes all the way from 16 to 70. So the stem part of our diagram is going to be the tens place. So the one and the two and another two and a three and a three and a three and a four, four or a five, five and a seven. But we're not going to write them multiple times for the stem part. The stem part, the numbers will only occur once. So just one, 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 two, one, three, one, four. 1, 5, and 1, 7. Now, just like on a tree, there can be several leaves on one stem. So, for, uh, for example, there's a 0 and a 5 and a 9 that's going to be listed next to the 3. Let's see what that looks like. So here, again, there's was the 3, and there's the 0 and the 5 and the 9. Okay, so... When we have 1 and a 6, that's the number 16. 2 and 9 is the number 29. And then 2 and 9 repeats itself again, that's another 29. Then we've got 3 and 0, that's 30. 3 and 5, that's 35. 3 and 9, that's 39. Then we have 4 and 0, that's 40. 4 and 4 is 44. 4 and a 6 is 46. 5 and 0 is 50, 5 and 1 is 51, and 7 and 0 is 70. Let's do another example. For this one, we have a hundred we have numbers, but look, it's in we have numbers that are hundreds. So if we were to just do the front number, all of them would be one. It would all be on the same stem. That's going to be confusing. So we're gonna go ahead and make our stem the first two numbers. So 12, um, so 12, and these are all 12s, right? And then a 13, a 14, and a 15, and a 16. So it'll look like this. So 12 and 0 is 120. 12 and 5 is 125. 12 and 9 is 129. Here's another 129. Then we have 13 and 4 is 134. 13 and 8 is 138. 14 and 3 is 143. We have another 143. 102, we have 149 and then another 149. We have 100 and, 156 and then 159. And then last we have 161. So let's um, do it. look at another example. This one is the numbers between 32 and 50 and we want a stem and leaf diagram. So go ahead and see if you can do this one by yourself. Go ahead and pause the video and see what, what you get. All right, so your stem and leaf diagram should have looked something like this. All right, now let's talk about scatter plots. Scatter plots are graphs that represent the relationship of two variables, so two different numbers, and the form of ordered pairs. So plotting points, just like we've already been doing, we learned how to plot ordered pairs, and we're going to put them, plot them on a coordinate plane, just like we've been doing. The only difference now is that our, our ordered pairs mean something. Our ordered pairs might say one and two, but the one represents a value of something, and the two represents a value of something. So our ordered pairs actually mean something. They represent a relationship of two things. So for example, we have H and W, and H represents height, and W represents weight. So 
So what we can do is we can make these ordered pairs. So our H is our first part of our ordered pair, and our W is the second part of our ordered pair. So 65 comma 160, 63 comma 145, 72 comma 180. And so when we graph them, we can graph them on a plot. So remember H was our first number, and remember our first number is the x-axis, so that's why it's horizontal. Notice that I did not start at one, which is good because my first number in this data is 60. So if I started at one, I would have to be drawing a really big graph. So I went ahead and started my graph at 60. And then notice that I did not do 61, 62, 63, 64, 65. Because if I did that, I would have to go all the way to 78, and that's a lot of numbers. So instead, I counted by 2, 62, 64, 66. So you can do that. And then remember, we let the second number represent weight, or W. So that's our y-axis. So again, I didn't start at 0. I started at 120 because that was my lowest W value. And then I went ahead, My since my highest number was 240, I didn't want to draw a graph that went all the way between 120 and 240. So instead, I decided to count by 20s, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200, 220, 240. And I, I used those intervals instead so that way my graph wasn't a huge graph. And so now I can plot those points. So for example, my first ordered pair was 61 comma 120, which is this little triangle right here. So I'm going to go ahead and plot all of those, all of that data, all of those ordered pairs, and I get a graph that looks like this. Now let's talk about something called correlation. Correlation refers to the relationship between the variables in a scatter plot. So if we're looking at that graph, does that correlation, is it going upwards which would be positive, or is it going downwards, which would be negative? So correlation can be positive or it can be negative. In our previous example, it was, um, it had a correlation as well. Let's look at this data. We have hours per week of TV. So for example, four for example, four hours of TV, in one week, eight hours of TV in one week, 11 hours, and so on. And then we have the GPA of that person. The person who watched four hours of TV had a GPA of 3.7. The person who had eight hours of TV had a GPA of 3.5. So there's a relationship here, so we can make it an ordered pair. The hours is our first number, and then GPA is our second number. So four comma thirty-seven. Four comma thirty-seven would be our ordered pair. Eight comma three point five. Eleven comma three. Ten comma two point eight. Fifteen comma two point seven. So, so we can plot those numbers, numbers on a graph. And we went between zero and thirty. And I'm going to go ahead and count by fives: five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. GPA is between 0 and 4, so I'm going to go ahead and do between 0 and 5, and that's not very many, so I'm going to go ahead and go one, count by 1s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I'll plot all of those points that we had said. And as you can see, it looks like the less hours, the more hours of TV you watch, your GPA goes down. So we would say this is a negative correlation because our data is going downward, so it's negative correlation. All right, so um, for this example, we want to construct a scatter plot for the data, which is this data has the uh, minutes of exercise and heart rate of a person. And we want to know what does the graph show and is the correlation positive or negative? Our data, so we have the minutes of exercise, so this is five minutes, and their heart rate is 92. For 30 minutes, their heart rate is 75. 
for 15 minutes, 78. And then it goes on and on. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and graph this. So remember, our M is our first number. That's along the x-axis. And then our R is on the y-axis. That's our y values. So we're going to plot these points, 5, 92. So when we look at our graph, Minutes is on the x-axis, so it's going to go between 0 and 70, so I'm going to count by tens. And then our rate, our heart rate, um, is it can go be between 0 and 120, so we're going to count by 20s. All right, so we plot those points, and notice that the correlation seems to be going downwards. Okay, so let's answer the questions. The scatter plot shows that the heart rate decreases as you exercise more. It also shows that the correlation is negative. Let's look at a couple of scatter plots and so we can talk about this. This one um, is comparing the alcohol consumed and reaction time when you're, dri when you're driving. How long does it take you to react to something that's happening in front of you? So it looks like the more alcohol you consume, the longer it takes you to respond to something. And so if you notice all of these plotted points, they seem to be going upwards. So we'd say this is a positive correlation. Now let's look at this graph. This is years of education and how many injuries you get at work. So it looks like the longer, the more years you have in education, the less injuries you're going to have in work. And since the plotted points seem to be going down, we would say this is a negative correlation. Now let's look at this last graph. This is anxiety level and achievement, and achievement scores. So as you see, the lower your anxiety level is, it seems that your achievement scores are kind of low. And then as your anxiety level increases, your achievement increases. But at a certain point, it looks like around maybe 90, after anxiety level of 90, the higher level your anxiety is, your achievement scores actually seem to go down. So it's kind of like a hill. It goes up and then it goes back down. So since it's, it's positive here, but negative here, we can't say it has any type of correlation. So we would say there's no correlation for this graph, for this scatter plot. All right, you're gonna do 10.2. And this time, instead of doing two through six evens, I want you to do numbers one, number two, and number three. So you're gonna do one through three, and you're gonna do all of them. And that's going to be due with your notes.